Welcome to the Teacher's Lounge, a podcast dedicated to providing real-life resources for early education professionals. The Teacher's Lounge is hosted by Noel Dentino and Jessica Day. Together, they bring almost 50 years of combined experience in and out of the early education classroom, offering a wealth of knowledge and practical insights that you need now if you're in childcare. Whether you're a new assistant or making the leap from lead teacher to director, we have you covered. Join us as we delve into the unique challenges and opportunities of each role, sharing our experiences and expertise with practical tools to help you succeed. So grab a cup of coffee or your favorite drink, and let's jump into the lounge. Welcome to another episode of the Teacher's Lounge podcast. I'm Jessica Day, and today we're focusing on a crucial topic, incorporating mentoring into your daily routine as a lead teacher. Creating a nurturing and supportive environment for your colleagues can significantly enhance their professional growth and the overall effectiveness of your classroom. Mentoring is a crucial aspect of fostering a positive and productive learning environment in early childhood education. As a lead teacher, you have the unique opportunity to mentor those who work alongside you, whether they're new assistants or experienced educators. Effective mentoring helps build confidence, improve skills, and create a cohesive teaching team. In this episode, we will explore practical ways to seamlessly integrate mentoring into your day, emphasizing five key strategies, clear communication, observing and identifying needs, providing hands-on learning opportunities, following up and reinforcing learning, and recognizing and celebrating progress. By incorporating these components into your teaching dynamic and daily routine, you can foster a collaborative and empowering atmosphere that benefits both you and your mentees. So let's dive in. Detailed strategies for effective mentoring. Clear communication. Start by understanding your colleague's current knowledge and comfort levels through open-ended questions like, what do you feel most confident about in your role? Or, are there any areas you'd like more guidance on? This helps identify where mentorship is needed. Set clear, specific, and achievable goals together ensuring mutual understanding and effective progress tracking. Observe and identify needs. Pay attention to how your mentee interacts with children, handles routines, and manages challenges. This helps identify areas where they need support or new strategies. Regularly ask reflective questions like, how do you feel about that activity? Or, what went well and what could we improve? to pinpoint areas for mentoring and continuous improvement. Provide hands-on learning opportunities. Assign tasks that are educational and integral to the classroom, such as leading a small group activity or managing part of the daily routine. Demonstrate best practices before your mentee performs the task. Ensure they gain practical experience and build confidence. Follow up and reinforce learning. After each task, provide specific, positive feedback on what they did well and gently guide them on what can be improved. Use examples from their performance to make feedback actionable. Encourage self-reflection by asking them to think about their experience and identify their own strengths and areas for growth. Questions like, what did you find challenging about leading that activity? can foster critical thinking and self-awareness, helping your mentee develop a deeper understanding of their role. Recognize and celebrate progress. Regularly acknowledge and celebrate your mentee's accomplishments, no matter how small. Specific recognition like, you did an excellent job managing the transition from playtime to snack time today, can boost their confidence and motivation. Foster a supportive atmosphere where your mentee feels valued and encouraged to take initiative, knowing that making mistakes is part of the learning process. Creating a positive learning environment is essential for their continued growth and development. 
Renee, the lead teacher at a childcare program, had been with the center for several years. She had developed a strong nurturing environment for her toddlers and was known for her mentoring skills. When Lori joined as her new co-teacher, Renee was excited to guide her. Although Lori had some experience, she was new to both the program and the dynamics of a toddler classroom. Renee started their first day together with a casual conversation to understand Lori's background and goals. She asked open-ended questions like, what do you feel most confident about in your role? And, are there any areas you'd like more guidance on? Lori shared that she was confident in engaging with the children during activities, but wanted to improve her classroom management skills. Together, they established goals to enhance Lori's abilities in this area. As they settled into their routine, Renee paid close attention to Lori's interactions with the toddlers. She noticed that Lori had a natural knack for storytelling, but struggled with transitions between activities. Renee used informal check-ins to discuss these observations, asking questions like, how did you feel about the transition from playtime to snack time today? This helped Lori become aware of specific moments where she could improve. Renee assigned Lori specific tasks that would help her learn and grow. She encouraged Lori to lead a small group activity, demonstrating first how to set up an engaging learning station. Lori observed Renee's method of transitioning the children between activities smoothly and then tried it herself under Renee's guidance. This hands-on approach allowed Lori to gain practical experience and confidence. After each task, Renee provided constructive feedback. For example, after Lori led a storytime session, Renee praised her storytelling skills and suggested ways to manage the children's attention better during transition. She encouraged Lori to reflect on her experience, asking, What did you find challenging about keeping the children engaged today? This self-reflection helped Lori identify her strengths and areas for growth. Renee made a point to regularly acknowledge Lori's achievements. When Lori successfully managed a smooth transition between activities, Renee said, You did an excellent job managing the transition from playtime to snack time today. This recognition boosted Lori's confidence and motivation. Renee fostered a supportive environment where Lori felt valued and encouraged to take initiative, knowing that making mistakes was part of the learning process. Through these mentoring strategies, Renee helped Lori integrate into the program and develop her skills in the toddler classroom. Their collaboration not only enhanced Lori's professional growth, but also contributed to positive and cohesive learning environment in the program. By diving deeper into these mentoring strategies, you can create a nurturing and effective learning environment for your colleagues. Mentoring is an ongoing process that requires patience, empathy, and a commitment to the professional development of others. Through thoughtful communication, observation, hands-on learning, constructive feedback, and recognition, you can help your mentees grow into confident and skilled educators. By integrating these mentoring strategies into your daily routine, you can help your colleagues develop their skills, boost their confidence, and create a more cohesive and effective teaching team. Remember, effective mentoring is an ongoing process that requires patience, empathy, and a commitment to the growth of others. Thank you for joining us on the Teacher's Lounge podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please share it with your colleagues and fellow educators. Implementing these mentoring strategies can make a significant difference in your teaching team's dynamic and the quality of education you provide. For more resources and insights on early childhood education, visit our website and subscribe to our podcast. Don't forget to follow us on social media to stay updated on upcoming episodes and tips for creating a thriving classroom environment. Until next time, keep fostering those positive learning environments and nurturing the growth of both your students and colleagues. And that brings us to the end of this episode of The Teacher's Lounge. We're so grateful for your time and hope you found our discussion helpful and inspiring. Remember, you are doing an amazing job in the field of early education, and we're here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, take care, and we'll be back soon with more resources, insights, and inspirations to help you succeed. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on all our social medias to stay up to date on the latest happenings inside the lounge. Keep up the great work. We're cheering you on.